Hey guys, Tim McCamus. I'm back here in the uh, showroom at the shop. We've got Chris Bell back here again, and we're going to uh, kind of continue on our, our shock series. So we, we started out with some basic uh, information. We went into uh, some nitrogen uh, adjustment settings. We talked about the dyno sheets. So what I'd like to do now is maybe touch on a little bit of the like real world track experience, okay? So um, I'm gonna throw some stuff at Chris uh, uh, about my car and, um, and he's gonna tell me what I should do. So this will kind of give you an idea of how the shock plays into the suspension on the car. So these are gonna be settings where um, I'm at the track and I either have a current issue or the track changes while I'm there. Um, not enough to where, that I wanna do a four link move, not enough where I want to change my wheelie bar settings or move weight around in the car, but I just need a little tuning in the shock. So, so I'm at the track, I've got my, uh, my nitrous pro mod car, my blown pro mod car there. The track prep is okay. Um, but I, I, but I need a little more bite. So I've got too much spin. I've got a little too much excessive tire spin on the initial hit of the car. Mm -hmm. And I would like to make a shock adjustment, but I'm really not sure what to do. So I would like to, it's not enough of a move for me to make a big mechanical four link change, but I would like to use the shock to tune the car. So let's start out with that scenario. I need a little more bite. Okay. Uh, and a real common question we get is the track was 90 degrees last night. It's 126 degrees today. Now the car has no bite. It's smooth the tires. So uh, on that, what we would do, so we went from a, a nighttime track that was tighter, cooler, going to a daytime track. Uh, a typical move would be to uh, soften the compression and tighten the extension. That allows the tire to compress more, uh, puts more bite in the initial tire, on the initial turn of the tire, and it, it slows the rate that the car comes back up which keeps bite in the car. On a four link car, that keeps the instant center down a little bit lower, which puts bite in the car. So that would be a common move. So let's just say that So say it one more time, soften the compression. Soften the compression, tighten the extension. Yep, so if I got this shock on the car here, so I've got my compression here, I've got my extension up here at the top. So if I got it mounted like this, I want to um, loosen up the compression setting Correct. by a couple clicks. By two, two clicks is where a noticeable move will start. Okay, um, and he, so we talked about that earlier, so I would counterclockwise, counterclockwise two clicks two here, clicks. and now I'm gonna do sweeps up here. Yes. So I'm gonna tighten this. You're gonna tighten that. Two so sweeps. So you're gonna go from, from right to left on this shock, you would go from right to left in mm -hmm. the window. Uh, two sweeps. Two sweeps is, is where a noticeable move happens. Uh, one thing that you will, if, if you move it two sweeps, doesn't do anything, you move it two sweeps, you don't really see it in your shock travel. Then that that tends to lead to other things. That's whenever you want to start looking at four link and stuff right. like that. But but typically if the car's happy, the car worked last night, the car was fine, the four link's happy, the weight's probably pretty happy. Uh, we can put a lot of bite. We can make the equivalent of, of moving, you know, 25 to 30 pounds say front to the back in the car, just in shock adjustments pretty easily. And that's a pretty significant move. If you took 25 off the nose and put it in the, in the, the back of the car, that's a huge, that's, that's, that's a pretty big, huge yeah. move. And we can do that typically in the range of the shock, put that much more bite into it. So because, uh, so once I do that adjustment, that is, how is that gonna affect the car? So go over that one more time. So because I'm tightening the extension, so when, when, you, when you initially, like if you look at the shock wrap, you're gonna get a slight bit of extension, then it's gonna go into compression, Correct. then it's gonna roll back in trying to get back to ride height. Correct. So by tightening that extension and softening the compression, what, what reaction is that having on the rear end housing to the chassis? Oh, okay, so let's just say that, um, let's just take that initial little bitty extension out of it and let's just start where it starts to compress. Whenever the, it compresses the back of the car, we soften that, it's gonna compress more. Let's just say that you had a number of 400 thousandths that it compressed. Now we soften it up a couple clicks, that makes 450 to 475 thousandths. Okay, so, so it drives the back of the car down. Anytime it drives the back of the car down and the car's lower in relation to the axle center line, it thinks that it adds weight back there as well. At the same time, it lowers the intersect on the car because it drives the four link bars down. It drives this front mount is lower, so it moves that lower mount down. A lower bar uh, has more bite, will create more bite than a higher bar. Um, if the bar gets too low, it can get into other issues. But, but so what we do is we are adding that. Then by keeping the extension, you know, tightening the extension, having an extension number in it, we hold it down there hold longer. Down, right. So we hold that weight to the rear of the car. We hold the intersect down. Now you know you may have to play with it. Maybe you know you move six clicks. 
And then you go out there and wow, it's just slowing the tire down whenever I get out at, at 30 feet or something. It's got too much bite out there. So let's back it off two clicks. Let's, let's you know, on the extension, let's let it back up a little bit faster. Right. That initial compression is the first turn of the tire. Uh, it's like putting spread in the, in the housing. Um, it's typically that first turn of the tire. It's that boom, sets the, the face of the tire nice and flat, holds it. You want the tire to be really flat. It, if that compression gets too stiff, and it's what happens a lot of times during the day, the track's bad, the compression's stiff, it tries to suck the center of the tire up, pushes on the sidewall, and we're talking about a slick, not a radial. Mm -hmm. um, it, it pushes on the sidewall and then it bows the center up. So we want, we want to soften that up to get that weight back there, but not force that tire into the ground and suck the center of the tire up, which puts bite in the car. Okay, so just so I can explain this a little more um, in kind of layman's terms is that, so what we're doing is we're using the shock to control the attitude of the four link in relationship to the rear end housing. Correct. So, so by com by letting this uh, compress a little easier, we're we're driving the chassis down in relationship to the axle center line, which is going to give us more bite Correct. mechanically through the four link. Correct. Okay. And then by holding it down with the extension, it'll hold it down a little longer. So, if I wanted to let it up out a little bit, I could I could release that extension adjustment, soften that up, still keep the compression soft, so get that initial hit but then maybe not so much bite out. Right, then let it drive back up. So we'll make the rate of climb higher than it was previously, sure. but the compression more. So that it just starts that number down, but then it gets back and takes that bite out on down track. Right, right. Okay, so um, on the opposite end of the spectrum, let's say I've been racing all afternoon. It's, uh, it's July and uh, it's August in Indy. It's hotter than hell. The track's 140 degrees, but then I've got a night session. Now it's 70 degrees, it's dark, the track's gonna tighten up. Okay, yep. so we're so we're going from that, we wanna we wanna leave our power alone, but we'd like to we know we're gonna have a little um, we're gonna have a, a tighter track to deal with. So you need to take a little bite away from it. Right. Know, so that you don't have to manipulate the rest of the car. Uh, on a situation like that, you would do basically the opposite. We would tighten the compression up. Um, you know, as we said, if it forces the tire uh, into the ground and it tries to take some load off the center, it actually takes some print off of the tire. It'll let the tire spin a little bit more. Uh, and, and then, you know, in that same opposite fashion, now the track's tight, the car's moving out, we don't want to have too much bite. So now we have to soften the extension up. We've tightened the compression, now we have to soften the extension. Nine times out of ten, whatever you do on one end of the shock, you do the opposite on the other end of the shock to get the desired effect. Sure. So, so now we would soften the extension back up and let it back up to keep bite out of the car. On the hot track, we kept it down to keep bite in the car. We want to take bite away from the car because the track's 40 degrees cooler. There's no sun on it. It's tight. You, know, you go out there and you know, pull is 100 better than it did or your, mm -hmm. your foot, you, know, you don't ball anything up. So now we let it up and we let the intersect up, we let the four link up, we took some bite away from it and the car can keep the tire going instead of, uh, if, if we keep it down too much and keep too much bite in it, uh, typically what it will do is it will try to just slow the tire down and then they'll drive in a tire shake because of it. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So what happens is a lot of times you might be, you might be very good in the afternoon and I see a lot of cars like this, uh, uh, customers will get. They'll be fast on a hot track, yep. but then at night they're garbage. I mean, they can't, they go out there middle of low gear, that thing shaking yep. sideways. It's because it's got too much bite. Too much bite. It's, it's, so it's went out there, they're used to, their, their setup is to spin the tire and, and to haul ass through low gear. But now they've got some, some bite out there because the, the, the rubber's tightened up, we've cooled down, and now we've got to deal with the tire getting knocked out of shape because yep. it's got too much bite for the combination to keep it going. Yeah, so and, and the track brought that bite to you. Yes. So now you have to manipulate the car to take that, you know, if you could put a number to the amount of bite, you have to take that amount out of the car sure. so that it makes the, the same run that it made during the day whenever it was hot. It's gonna run a little faster because the air is better. Right. But you want the car's attitude, um, you know, wheel speed numbers to be similar. So that's yep. that's where you just, you'll chase that stuff sometimes a little bit. But once people realize that um, they're killer during the day, just like you said, they're killer and they go to night, man, this thing just shakes. Yep, it's, you hear it all the time. Yeah, and, and that's probably one of the biggest things even more than than it was good at night and it spun during the day. Mm -hmm. You'll hear more they're good during the day and it shakes at night. Yep. It's got too much bite in it. We get it all the time. I mean, and it, you'll be up in staging lanes and, and the guys will be like, I suck at night, man. My car sucks. I, I hate it's, it. It's, it's cool gonna be up. Yeah, for an hour. because we don't it's, race, you know, we're racing elimination during the day. I don't know why we yeah. gotta run at night. I mean, I hear that all the yeah. time. This sucks because we're here on a on a tight track and my combination's all gonna be screwed up. But really, 
when you know that, a little minor shock adjustment can, can make all the difference in the world because yeah. you, it, it's not enough where you need to make a big swing on the forelink, but a little shock, if you know how this works, you're not, don't be scared to change it. I mean, you're not going to upset the car that much. If, you, if you're talking a couple clicks and a couple sweeps, you are not upsetting the car. So do that and learn how that reacts to what your combination is. And those combinations that, that do that, that, that we see very consistently are, because you know, the, the old saying is a spinning tire won't shake, you know? Right. So if you keep that tire up and spinning, keep it, keep it round, keep it, round. it will go right through low gear. But what happens is it goes out there and it gets hold of some racetrack and that big old soft sidewall all of a sudden now distorts that tire and you're driving over a square tire instead of a round tire. So that's what, then it just beats the shit out of the car that runs junk. And, and, so, and that's something, once you get comfortable with that, you know, you're talking about you know, making a couple clicks, um, it's not uncommon to get in the staging lanes at a national event and get stuck up there for an hour. Right. All right, so it, it's 5 o'clock when you get up there. Now it's 6.15 when time you go, sun's gone. Yeah. You can, it, once you get comfortable with it, you can dive under there with that 5.30 seconds Allen range and click, click. Yep. You made it in the staging lanes. Yeah. Uh, or if it's a, you know, a canister style, you just got a knob that you change, don't need any tools. And you just take that knob and boom, make it, man, everybody's shaking. Everybody's out there shaking in front of me. Let's tighten it up a little bit. Let's, let's keep the tire round through there. Sure. And you'll feel much more comfortable. And, and that's the purpose of these series is to get people comfortable with these you know, right. adjustments. Because we, we consider this like a fine tuning adjustment. I mean, the, when, you, when, you're, when you're changing four length, that's, that's a big swing. I mean, you're, that's a major change. Okay, you're doing a, um, a hole to hole swap or you're trying to, to really change the attitude of the car. But something like the shocks are they're, they're very fine adjustment that that can really make the car fast if you know how to adjust it so again we'll, we'll get into some of the uh triple adjustable stuff and show some of that a little later but you know this is a basic double adjustable that's kind of simple to understand but if you once you learn that and once you know some of this terminology you'll be a lot more comfortable in tuning the shock you'll be more comfortable in what you're buying so that you're not just buying it because Joe bought a set and now his car runs better, so I'm gonna buy a set. You should know what you're buying and understand how they work, just like any other part of the car. So I'm gonna sign off. Uh, I wanna thank Chris for coming up again. Um, we're gonna extend this series on and get into some more advanced stuff a little later because we wanna, we'd like to talk about some triple adjustable stuff. We'd also like to get into some strut settings because on the opposite end of the car, we've got the same type of, of system uh, controlling the attitude of the front wheel and tire combination. So once we get into the uh, get a little more in depth with the with the rear shocks, we'll jump up front to the struts and talk about those adjustments also. So thanks a lot, guys. If you have any questions, give us a call, and we will be glad to help you out.